<clears throat> All right. Hello again, it's Kippers and Stingrays, Ranger Bill here. I uh, had to get out of the house, had to get down into the woods, down on the marsh side, on the seaside, in order to uh, get out of that incessant wind that we've all been dealing with between them. And uh, on the occasion when the wind's not blowing the bugs, like I am down here, uh, there's a price to be paid for being outside. In addition to that, once I selected this cool little spot I wanted to come to and share with you guys, um, and there's a point to it, I uh, discovered that all over the ground, crawling on my books and everything else, are uh, various size ticks. <laughs> so, I'm not afraid of ticks. As a ranger, it's pretty much the price of doing business. However, I really do not like to uh, feed critters with my blood they will take that blood not because they're hungry but you know they need to uh, feed their larva to make more ticks to take more blood so we're gonna make this a little quicker than I had planned and uh, but important nonetheless so I talk about you know if you're in my classes with me um, I'm always bugging you about uh, write your name on the board and I'll be scratching all the time now that I've discovered ticks I just deal with it um, and I'll be picking them off as I see them because <laughs> they're all there. Anyhow, this is live. Um, I'm always asking you to uh, pick a colored marker and then write your name on the board first and last and ask you to do it uh, neatly and legibly and in your own unique style. And, uh, and then I start bugging you with questions like, you know, where you're from, who are your people. I do that not just to get all up in your business, which I do, but uh, because your people are my people. They're connected uh, through an assortment of amazing relationships, heartbreaking relationships, um, but amazing historical occurrences nonetheless. The things that we read in our in school, the, the uh, important historical events that we are learning and discussing are, are indeed our collective important events, but individually we make up those collective events, we're part of it. Um, I love tracking from my seventh great grandfather who arrived uh, in the Rappahannock River in 1666 and the flow of my family across the nation. At that time we... Uh, he was uh, 14 years old and, and basically thrown out of Scotland, shipped to the, uh, the New World and came off of a, a vessel in what is now Tappahannock as an indentured servant. The wind's ticking up. The first few years he worked as an indentured servant for a planter. And then uh, by uh, his 10th year, 14th year, he was a, a landowner himself. He married a, uh, a woman by the name of Anne Stubbleson, who was Dutch. He was Scottish, she was Dutch, and together they began the Ferguson line of our family uh, in the New World. Um, as I said, he began as an indentured servant, uh, basically scooped up by the law and sent to the New World for a price uh, from Scotland, war-torn, impoverished. He arrived here, he worked off his time. Then he too became a landowner and the owner of human beings. And uh, that's always a, a very complex subject that uh, we are no strangers to here on the Eastern Shore. Uh, his wife, Anne, my seventh great grandmother, makes reference in her will to uh, her boy, uh, Mature, who I assume or see as, as, as a 10, 12 year old child. 
And so these are very complex stories with very different sides. My family served on all sides of all conflicts. They were revolutionaries, they were loyalists to the crown. They were in the north, they were in the south. Um, and ultimately, we're all here. We're all part of that family. And so those complex stories are not always um, pleasantly palatable, but they're, they are us. They make us who we are, and we don't run from those stories. Someone who captures that quite well is Miss Frances Bivens Latimer. She uh, has a number of publications. She, from the shore, an amazing uh, historian and author, person, um, passed. And, uh, but she captures the story of those in our community that we otherwise may not read about very often or understand the significance of their contribution to the community we live, we live in and this world we live in. And as I tell all my students, if you just arrived last week from another nation and you have arrived here and brought with you uh, a meal, a song, a story, a, a religion, you are now part of our culture and we are better for it. So. Without further ado, I'd like to read a few things. I can't read this whole book because it's not laid out that way. But just to entice you, I wanted to, uh, to read a little something to you. And then, uh, and then I'll get out of these ticks <laughs> and get home and uh, freak out. I'm human. All right, so there's a, uh, a short poem in the beginning which I wanted to bring to your attention. This, by the way, is called Life for Me Ain't Been No Crystal Stair by Francis Bivens Latimer. Mother to son, well, son, I'll tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it, and splinters, and boards torn up, and places with no carpet on the floor, bare. But all the time, I's been a-climbing on, and reaching landings, and turning corners, and sometimes going in the dark, where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on the steps because you finds it kind of hard. Don't you fall now, for I still going, honey. I still climbing, and life for me ain't been no crystal stair. Langston Hughes. She has that in the front of this, uh, this publication, and I enjoyed that. Um, publications made up uh, and it draws attention to this particular book does uh, to specific people within our community African Americans within our community that have um, prospered in business education uh, medicine theology politics law the military and uh, even sports figures I'm only going to introduce you to one which was uh, by no means more important than any of the others. Um, I have since come to, uh, to study and understand as many of the, uh, the people in this book as I can and others. And you know, learning being the way it is, you get a little information and as you read through, you see a name or a date or an event or a location or something that catches your eye. And that leads to um, reading and understanding and applying, hopefully, uh, more knowledge. And so it, be, it builds on itself, and it's a pretty cool thing. <clears throat> One of the ones that I wanted to bring my attention to is, is quite clear. Uh, sometimes in my life that uh, things happen for a reason. Whatever you think about a higher power, lower power, dumb luck, coincidence. Uh, but I was driving down James Allen Drive one day on my way to the state park from my uh, home in Machapungo. And as I crossed the railroad tracks, I came across a big pile of garbage um, in the middle of the road. Someone had dumped their entire load, which is not uncommon in this county, right in the middle of the road. So I got outside to clean it. I was first there, and I got out and started cleaning the mess out the road so the cars could get by. There was a lady sitting on her porch, sipping her coffee, and staring at me like I had lost my mind. And uh, lo and behold, in the middle of this pile of uh, rubble on the road is a uh, plastic great horned owl filled with sand. And the moment I saw it, I knew that I was going to be spending the rest of my life with that plastic because plastic is gonna outlast me 
And uh, I could use that owl to tell a lot of stories about recycling, reusing, reducing our impact. And I could also think about the street that I was on called James Allen Drive and uh, take this opportunity to find out more about Dr. Allen and others. I named the owl James Allen, O-W-L-E-N, <laughs> always. And, uh, and I carry him with me a lot. If you're at Kit the Peak, you see him in my classroom and uh, he's just kind of an icebreaker for me. I didn't drag him out here today because He's a plastic owl. So anyway, I just want to read briefly about Dr. Allen, and that's kind of an example of how they portray the uh, people in our community, and maybe that'll give you an interest and give you a little context, and then we'll get on out of here because uh, it'll be getting dark before long, and the uh, critters are having their way with me. So James Calvin Allen, MD. James Calvin, J.C. Allen, was born to James and Bertha Morris Allen in Eastville, Virginia, on October 28, 1909. He attended local elementary schools and went to Tidewater Institute, the only secondary school for black children on the eastern shore of Virginia at that time. His father, James, delivered ice in the summer months, but while school was in session, his truck served as the school bus. The transportation fulfilled such a critical need that an image of the bus was featured on Tidewater Institute's diploma. James graduated from there in 1929. School bus gets connection. In his youth, local African-American physicians Charles M. Reed and Charles Walker were role models for Allen. After the death of his older sister, Flossie, he di who died at the age of 20, he was determined to become a doctor and began his college education at Lincoln University in Oxford, Pennsylvania. In 1933, Allen received his undergraduate degree from Lincoln and entered Howard University Medical School in Washington, D.C. While a student at Howard, he married Cleo Brickhouse, and they had a daughter, also named Cleo. Tragically, on June 22, 1937, his wife died unexpectedly from complications secondary childbirth. While he should have been marching with the rest of his graduating class, the young doctor returned home to Cleo's funeral. In 1933, Allen received his undergraduate degree from Lincoln. Excuse me. Dr. Allen interned at Mercy Hospital in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where he met and married Frances Taylor, a registered nurse. Frances raised Cleo as her own. His training complete, Allen returned to the Eastern Shore with his family in 1938 for the first three years of his career. He practiced medicine in Hare Valley in the office of one of his heroes, Dr. Charles Reed. He quickly became a vital part of the community, treating both black and white patients on a first-come, first-served basis. Allen made house calls, saw patients at the county jail and health department. He delivered babies at Northampton Accomack Memorial Hospital, now Riverside Shore Memorial Hospital. Later, he served as a medical examiner for Northampton County. Francis and James Allen were active members of Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Eastville. Francis, a musician, played the organ and the piano, and the couple often welcomed young people to their home for social gatherings. In 1942, Allen moved his medical practice to Eastville on Route 13. It was there that he built a home and office, which included a laboratory. While the off average office cost cost five to six dollars, no one that desired care was turned away, and patients were never sent bills for the services they rendered. Educating his parents, his patients, was important to the country doctor. After a diagnosis was made, Allen routinely pulled medical textbooks from their shelves to make certain his patients understood how to participate in their own care. He also held them accountable for returning when the next visit was advised. Dr. Allen continued to be available to his patients 24 hours a day until his retirement, December 31, 1983. He died on September 8, 1985. So this, uh, this book and, and many others from Ms. Latimer uh, and other uh, historians and authors around the shore illuminate the, the lives, the intricate personal lives of the people that have come before us. And when you start to read them, you start to see the interconnectivity between things. Uh, you know, the story of using his ice truck as a school bus and then them using that image on their diplomas for years uh, those are amazing stories. They're vibrant, colorful stories of human beings 
overcoming adversity, just like we're all trying to do right now. Um, the forest that I'm in right now is uh, a mix of old hardwood trees and a bunch of young stuff and a bunch of young uh, pines. And you might wonder, well, how'd that buzz get in here? At one point in time, this was an open area. At one point in time, this was a yard. Right behind me over here is the foundation of a small house that uh, once stood right here on the edge of the water. My family members uh, in the past had knew them, uh, even took them up to the market each month uh, back in the black and white era. <laughs> and so um, people have lived here and stayed here. And at one time it was an open area. After it was uh, left and, and abandoned, bought, became a conservation area and then private land again. The trees, some came in naturally, others were planted in conservation efforts, and now it's uh, locked in here forever um, as a testament of our individual and collective histories and our past. If you follow the, uh, the line of the newer trees, uh, newer being in the last 20 years, you can physically follow the newest um, pine trees right on up to uh, the field where the road used to be or where the horse path was once at. And that uh, meanders right on up through the field past the old estate house, which is a grand old house, and off towards uh, the west where it intersects with James Allen Drive. And just south of there, you'll find the, uh, a cemetery, a family cemetery, um, with Dr. Allen uh, and his, uh, his family, his father, interred there. And uh, so those stories are right here in our backyard. They're right here down the street. They're across the street from us at people's houses we never knew. Uh, you see those uh, markers, those grave markers uh, all over and just around, just like around here, the irises and the daffodils give away um, where once there was life and love and color and, and joy and where there may be again. So anyway, without uh, further ado, I'm gonna bid you guys adieu. Uh, be safe, stay engaged, get out and see your environment within reason, close to home, stay within the governor's expectations, and uh, use common sense, and we'll see you when we see you. All right, we love you. Take care. Peace.